If you're an athlete, you know the greatest motivator of all is the fear of letting your teammates down. After all, a team is only as good as its weakest link. So you owe it to those wearing the same jersey as you to be your best every time you step on the field. That's why there's no vape in team. When you vape, you can expose your lungs to toxic chemicals that can damage your lungs. If you're a step behind, the team's a step behind. Brought to you by The Real Cost and the FDA. Hello, fellow gamers! Welcome to another episode of the Video Gamers Podcast, hosted by three lifelong gamer dads. We have a lot to talk about in today's episode. We're going to start off the pod by talking a little bit about our experience hosting a booth at Phoenix Fan Fusion, which was a total blast, and then we're going to provide some of our thoughts on recent gaming news. Please rate our show five stars and check out Patreon support options to unlock bonus episodes and lots of other perks at MultiplayerSquad.com. I am your host, Paul, and joining me, he was the best-dressed Kratos over the weekend and even had to face off against his father, Zeus, at Fan Fusion. It's Josh. Dude, for, <laughs> oh, okay, so first of all, for people that don't know and they're like, what the heck is Fan Fusion? Fan Fusion is Comic-Con, yep. so they just can't use the Comic-Con name, but it, you're talking the same scale of like an event. Fan, Fan Fusion was huge. And it was a blast. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we saw multiple Kratoses, and uh, yours was definitely the best. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's good to stand out above all the others. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> and then joining Josh and me, he was the best-dressed Nathan Drake. Although, I'm going to say Ryan's teenage daughter, Jaden, wins the the real MVP here oh. from the podcast. It's Ryan. Yeah, you know that uh, the salesman, saleswoman, entrepreneurial stuff that just runs in the blood, and she took right to it. Hey, hey, you want to spin the wheel? Uh, uh, oh, just, all I need you to do is this. <laughs> oh man, yeah, it, clearly, clearly a salesperson at heart, and the fact that she enjoyed it uh, really cracked me up because she had no problem engaging with strangers. Asking for ratings, telling people to check out the podcast. All right. So, yeah, let's talk a little bit about Fan Fusion. So, we were sharing a bunch of updates on Discord with the community. You guys have been there before. I never had. So, that was my first time along with running the booth. We were set up in what they called the gaming hall. There was so much cool stuff to see. We engaged with a ton of people. We were giving away free prizes. We were getting people to rate the show. We saw so much cosplay. Like, what are some of the highlights of the weekend for you guys? I, I mean, for me, all of it, to be honest. Uh, I mean, it was the... We didn't really know what to expect. You know, we knew that it was a big event, but we didn't know how people would respond to like a podcast having a booth and like what would they do at the booth? Because normally at these things, you're, you're, you're just spending money. People just want yeah, to shop, selling man. Stuff. Yeah, you know, yeah. people want Funko Pops or cool posters or neat little figurines of their favorite Genshin characters or whatever, you know? And so we really didn't know what to expect. And dude, it wound up being way better. I mean, way better <laughs> oh, than yeah. I think any of us were hoping for. So I, I know for me, my favorite part being an extrovert and like talk, I just love to talk to people and be around people was the fact that we just, we had like thousands of people coming by and like just talking to us the whole time yeah. and then wanting to like talk about the podcast or talk about video games. And, you know, we got to meet some really, really cool people. So for me, that was the highlight for sure. Yeah, it was, uh, it's, there was a lot this year. It was definitely at one point on Saturday, I know they were holding people back from going down to the exhibitor hall where a lot of the booths are and stuff. Um, our area was a little bit separate from that, but it was just, it was so cool. The thing that I love is it got back down to that core of just talking games to people like, what are you playing? You know, and they'd say the the amount of times these crazy obscure games or some one guy said Star Fox and like Ace Combat and some other people were saying Pokemon and all, every game under the sun was what people were playing at this moment. And it just opens your eyes to how many different kind of types that everybody falls into and, and falls in love with. So it was so cool. It was cool to talk to everybody, um, see everybody get hyped up, tell us they're going to listen, you know, check things out. And then uh, just seeing my daughter get hyped up about it. And she's really getting into 
the cosplaying and, and all this kind of environment. So yeah, it was the whole thing was just awesome. <laughs> I think my favorite thing of the weekend was seeing people in Helldivers cosplay. Oh, yeah. So, like, in the beginning, we saw a couple people roll around with, like, the capes and the helmets, the whole ordeal. And, Ryan, you spent the last several weeks, if not a couple of months, just running your 3D printer nonstop. And that's, like, some of the free prizes we were giving away. You made, I think, something like 70 Helldivers medals. Yeah, about that. That looked so good, exactly like in the game. And so I think it was, I don't remember whose idea it was. It was one of you two where we saw the Helldivers cosplay and just said, well, whether they spin the wheel and wait around or not, we have to give Helldivers medals to anyone in Helldivers cosplay. (laughs) And so we saw those people. We saw a whole squad of four roll in yep. and so they were all doing like they the had salute, the salute and so, ryan and yeah. i are doing finger guns back at them <laughs> we had some people come around with like the voice modulators so even like talking through the helmet i mean we even had people in hell divers cosplay come around and say we were sent on a quest to come find the video gamers podcast by some other hell divers so it was just really cool to be able to see the love especially for one of our favorite games of the year Yeah. Yeah. It's just like I said, just tons of cool people, man. Everybody is nice to everybody, which is rare when you're around 100,000 people. You know, people are complimentary. They're polite. Like it's it's a it's a really cool thing, man. I'm very like hooked on this event now. Um, But yeah, I mean, from a podcast standpoint, it was more successful than we could have hoped for. I mean, we like I said, we met a lot of new people, got to chat video games, uh, we got a lot of new ratings and stuff like that, uh, which was really nice. It shot us up the charts, which is always good to see because, um, you know, exposure is is the name of the game, right? It's the more people you can get in front of, the better. And this was a really good opportunity to do that. Yeah, get, getting our hustle on. I will also say we set up a monitor with Bopple Battle running with four <laughs> controllers. And some of the kids were just there the whole weekend. Both, like, yeah, the whole time. Yeah, yeah. So like their parents brought them there and then just kind of like let them play Bopple Battle for hours on end. But it was very fun hearing all the laughing and the cackling and the yelling. Like everyone was getting really into it. All right, let's go ahead and move on to some gaming news. So this week brought two really highly anticipated releases that came out on the exact same day. So Senua's Saga Hellblade 2 released. It did receive pretty mid-critical reviews. It has a score of 81 on Metacritic, although I will mention that's the exact same score as the first one. Kind of seems like most people had the same criticisms and the same compliments to both games. We're actually going to be doing a deep dive that will release on Monday, so we're going to hold off on our thoughts on Hellblade 2 until then. And then we also had another game release that could not be more different from Hellblade 2. (laughs) Total opposite end of the spectrum in X Defiant. So this is Ubisoft's attempt to wrestle some of the multiplayer shooting uh, market away from Call of Duty. Plays very similar to Call of Duty, except there's a higher time to kill. Every character that you pick has an ability along with an ultimate. So it adds a little bit of a twist to the Call of Duty genre. And... The game seems to have been a pretty big success. They've had over 3 million users within the first 48 hours. They've already hit 300,000 concurrent players. Now that the game is here, I know we haven't had a lot of time to play because we had to immediately do Fan Fusion into Hellblade 2, but we were able to play a few matches earlier today. So like, what are your guys' early impressions so far on the official release? Mine has been very up and down, um, as I have been very prone to let you guys know. <laughs> I'm like, this game's stupid. Okay, that oh, match wasn't so bad. I lost. Did, I lost. I hate this game. This is the worst game ever. This stupid <laughs> sideways bunny hopping stuff has got to end, you know? And then it's like, then I have a good match. And I'm like, all right, all right, you know? All right, maybe X Defiance got something to it. So I, I, I'll be honest, man. I don't know. Like I had fun playing with you guys. I played with a buddy of ours, Jared, uh, last night. I've done probably a dozen solo matches at this point, and I am very up and down on X Defiant at this point. Like, like legitimately playing with friends, I enjoy. I like the progression of hey, leveling up weapons and doing challenges to try to unlock new weapons and stuff like that, but. I don't know if I'm a fan of not having the skill-based matchmaking. Yeah, um, I'm with you on that. I don't know why people 
say that's a great thing to not have it. I'd rather the matches be close than every once in a while being able to wreck some fools. Like I'd rather have good even competition. Like the the one thing I don't get is I and I mean I could argue for skill based matchmaking and I could argue against it. Like I legitimately can see both sides of it. The general reason why people don't want skill based matchmaking is so that you can feel super powerful. Like every now and then you're going to have that match where you're the top dog and you're just wrecking fools. And while that you know sounds great when it happens to you, I feel like it doesn't happen enough. And Mm -hmm. then, you know, we played a match where the other team was like three incredibly good snipers. Oh, yeah. And it was like we couldn't (laughs) even move, man. And it was just frustration for like 10 minutes. You know what I mean? So it's like at least with skill based matchmaking, I get that you don't have those blowout like where you just feel like, you know, all powerful, like, oh, I'm just popping off. But I think I'd rather just a match be be fun than frustrating. So I don't know, man. I get it. It's hard. But that, I mean, that's the reason they have like different levels of leagues and stuff. Like I played uh, men's league hockey and they'd have, you know, B, C, D leagues. I played in B and, you know, some C. When I would play like beginner leagues or, or D leagues to like help fill in, it just, you're like, oh, okay, these guys are kind of bad, you know, and, and you feel bad. I don't, it's not fun. So I don't get why people enjoy coming in and just curb stomping us and, and uh, getting, you know, 37 and four, you know, and just kills like that. So, I don't know. I'm with you guys on the on the matchmaking. I, I think skill based is is fine. Just make it even and, and make it fun. You know. Yeah, I'm 100 percent with you. Like we could go out and play kickball against a bunch of six year olds and <sighs> make them cry and beat them. <laughs> but what would the point be? Like I, I, I wouldn't feel good about it. I don't so. know. I'd feel pretty good. Yeah. I'm I'm, I just I just imagine the sound of throwing that that ball. And I was gonna say I'm just gonna... having it bounce off. Of You're out. Kid. You're out. <laughs> <laughs> the kid just goes flying. Like, all right. Well, Other than that, though, I freaking love this game, Paul. I do too. Are you with me? Yeah, it's, dude. I it's don't, sweet, dude. It's so sweet. I think the time to kill is good. I think the re- perfect. The yeah, I think the recovery rate. It's not too fast to where you can um you can still follow up on a guy and finish him off if he's you know close. But if you duck away and you're smart about it, you can recover and engage again soon. So I, I love the little abilities. Um. And obviously, you know, Paul, the spider bot, that thing is the bomb. I know. I'm just sad that we have to level up and work our way there. Because yeah. the last you and I played was in the beta when you had access to everything. So in my first match, I was like, where's the spiderling? And I was like, <laughs> dang it, I have to level up. I, I, I will say it is funny. And Call of Duty, of course, has had this for a, a while. But you have to like level up your individual weapons to unlock all the attachments. And that makes it really hard to switch off a gun that you're finally popping off with because it's hard to gauge like, okay, I started with the M4. Now I've got the AK. Well, now I got my AK up to where I've got a few attachments. It's feeling pretty good. Well, now I unlocked, you know, this new weapon, but now I'm running around with iron sights and I'm sucking with it. And it's like, well, should I stick with it and upgrade it? You know, it's kind of hard to tell, but of course you have to have some kind of motivating factor to keep playing. It is really satisfying to see that, you know, level up your AK is level eight and it's like, sweet. You know, what did I unlock? I got to go update my loadout. Uh, But do you guys have like any favorite weapon types or any, any weapons so far? I'm really digging the assault rifles. It's me too. That's, that's funny because I have not, I played one match with the basic AR and that was it. And then I was like, let me try this SMG. Ooh, let me try this LMG. So uh, that's what I've been leveling up. I'm about to start working on the ARs, but then seeing all these snipers in this game and getting yeah. wrecked by them <laughs> kind of makes me want to go like, oh, yeah, I could be a sniper too. But Not then, standing on the point, nowhere yeah. near the zones. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Not helping anybody out. <laughs> just, you know, just getting those headshots. So... Um, yeah, I mean, I like SMGs historically. I've always preferred SMGs in games. It's just more my up close and personal kind of play style running around corners and flanking and stuff like that. So I think for me, those are my favorite. The LMG, if you can get a good lane and just rain down bullets from afar and just not have to reload because other people assume that you're reloading at one point and I'm like dude I still got 50 rounds in this magazine man <laughs> like please step into this lane and then they do and you're like you hear that nice little satisfying headshot that tink 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 yeah and then, yeah then they just go down so yeah so far I mean I I will say I am enjoying the game I just 
I, I haven't made up my mind yet. Like I might love it or I might not love it, but I, I think for me, it's still like, I'm still kind of on the fence. Yeah. I love the, uh, the combo with like fire drone and then the grenade, especially on, uh, the escort missions. Cause everyone clumps mm. up on the, on the package. And then if you throw a fire drone and a grenade in there, usually you'll get at least a couple. Um, that one's great. And then with the, uh, the sensor pings where you can see where everyone's at, you can actually see kind of their red silhouette through. So you can see them about to peak. And then you can just get a beam right on their head and just nuke them. You know, I love doing that in those. It doesn't work as well in open maps, but in those kind of tight quarter maps where you can see the guys peeking out, it's it's so good. Yeah. For someone who's not super uh, tech proficient in the Call of Duties, I tend to just get wrecked nonstop. So the fact that X Defiant adds those extra abilities, you get to play a little bit more with like positioning and not just clicking on, you know, the headshots. So that's what I enjoy trying to play a little bit smarter. I did try out the SMGs after Josh was really lauding them. And I went 10 and 22 in that match. <laughs> and I was like, man, I this gotta, SMG is not working. And then I had to go right back to my ARs. Gotta stick and then with I was it, doing man. a lot better. You got to stick with it. I, that's why I like the M4, yeah. though, because it's more mid-range. So you can still get those long shot kills. But it's good enough in close quarters. Yeah. For me, anyways. This game, o- almost all the maps have a lot of mid-range combat, which yeah. is why I've been liking the ARs. All right. Well, let's go ahead and take a short break. And then we'll come right back and talk about Shadow of the Erd Tree. All right, guys. This oh. week brought us oh. the. <laughs> oh, you're right. Oh. Calm, calm down, Josh. <laughs> oh, say it, say it, Paul. <laughs> go get, go take a, a cold shower. Say. All right. So, Elden Ring: <laughs> Shadow of the Erd Tree dropped a story trailer, and look, I'm not dogging Elden Ring or the upcoming DLC, but I swear this was three minutes of random words and images thrown together. I mean, I thought it looked awesome. I don't really know what I saw or heard in this trailer. I, like, what did you guys think <laughs> after watching I this? I looked at it and I'm like, I don't even know the story and I'm somehow more confused. Or okay. quote unquote story. <laughs> Let me ask you guys a question. Did it sure. look awesome? It looks yes. awesome. It looks yes. awesome. That's all you need to know. <laughs> Dude, this is all you need to know. Don't worry about like little things like story mm-hmm. or character. It's a story trailer. You know, or characters <laughs> or, you know, what the little gold light means. And uh, no, 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 nobody cares about any of that stuff, man. Oh, my goodness. It's- I actually restarted the trailer and transcribed what's in there so I could follow it. It's very short. There's not a whole lot of words. Okay. I'm going to read it to you right here because it's so short. Ooh. McCullough the kind spoke of the beginning, the seduction and the betrayal, an affair from which gold arose, and two was shadow born. What happened was a war unseen, one that could never be put to song, a purge without grace or honor, the tyranny of Mesmer's flame, and so kindly McCullough would abandon everything, his golden flesh, his blinding strength, even his fate, but we are not deterred, we choose to follow, will you walk with us? And I felt like Pippin in Lord of the Rings, where I'm like, yeah, where are we going? <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't get this, but uh, it's just more Elden Ring, right? Like, I think that's all people care about. More cool bosses, cool new areas to explore. I mean, that's what it's really all about. Like, I don't even know why they dropped a story trailer. I, I don't know if anyone it really cares all that much. gave them a reason to show more footage, and that footage looks awesome. <laughs> Dude, the giant, like, lumbering fire giants that look like baskets yeah. with the just yeah, yeah, flames, yeah. like, raging out of them. Like, that was like, yeah! The walking brazers, which yeah. one time in the past on the show, I accidentally called braziers. Yep. <laughs> Not going to make that mistake again, but yeah. They were, like, massive, like, 50 foot tall braziers like walking around lit on fire it was awesome walking braziers you have yeah. my uh, curiosity yeah. you have my interest <laughs> that's yeah. a different game I, I mean we've <laughs> joked about this before story in an elden ring i know there's people that dive into the lore on this and i know we're gonna have a listener or or 10 there's out story. there there's story like, bro yeah the story makes total sense guys i don't like why is it so hard to follow listen listen i don't care about no story when it comes to elden ring man there's cool characters cool Okay, Michaela and Melania, the brother sister weird duo that's something about the Erd Tree and all that stuff. Like, okay, cool. I freaking love Elden Ring, man. And I could not tell you anything about the story in that game because it don't matter. 
Talk about you know, the story. <laughs> all I know is with Shadow of the Earth Tree, there's some fire dude named Mesmer that's got something to do with stuff. He's torching everything. There's more of the golden Erd Tree light thing that, for whatever reason, just makes my brain happy. And this game comes out in a month, man. Ah, oh, so excited, dude. That's Less true. than a month. Yeah. June 21st. Uh, and, and just because you two non Elden Ring loving friends of mine family show family show i know that so <laughs> we have a game giveaway going on that will we're actually going to pick a winner the day that this episode releases but like a solid 80 percent of the people that respond i said what game are you most hyped for that's a future release like 80 percent of the responses are elden ring shadow of the Erd tree and yeah, it's like yeah. there is there is a world of people that are super stoked for this game, and I am one of them. Oh, dude, I was getting some stuff last night from the the grocery store, and I overheard. Uh, oh, I started something something Dark Souls, and then they were going, and I'm like, "You guys talking about Elden Ring?" And they're like, "Yeah," and I was like, "Shadow of the Earth Tree." <laughs> yeah, and then then they just started going off on You're it. Darn I'm like, right. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, well, my base- buddy's excited too. The base game sold like 24 million copies. Like, Jeez. yeah, you know, it's one of the best selling games of the last several years. Uh, I mean, in addition to that trailer, there were some leaked images online. I don't know if you guys had a chance to really look at it. It, it doesn't really show a whole lot, but we did get to see what the Land of Shadow looks like, which is where Shadow of the Earth Tree takes place. I, I did enjoy seeing different colors, like some different biomes. I mean, if nothing else, even if you don't love Elden Ring, you know the game is going to look beautiful. I mean, you know, that that obviously goes without saying. Elden Ring is gorgeous. It is a hauntingly beautiful game. Like, I, I mean, we're playing Hellblade 2 right now. I have said I think this might be the most graphically advanced game I've ever seen in my life. Um, but there's something about Elden Ring that is this weird, like, surreal, uh, eerie like beauty to it, which I really jive with. And I mean, it's true because number one, Dark Souls games have never been called good looking ever, but there is something magical about Elden Ring and the world that, that it encompasses and some of the scenery and vistas and stuff like that. So yeah, I agree. I think it's a beautiful game. Yeah. Well, since we're on the topic of souls like games, we have our last story of the week. We got some leaked details about Black Myth Wukong. This is the Josh episode. Was, Josh has never been more excited. <laughs> I'm just like, I was like, this episode's made for me. <laughs> yeah. So well-known leaker Lunatic Ignis shared on Twitter some details about the game. It is going to include New Game Plus at launch which is nice. You don't have to wait for that in an update. It's going to have multiple endings. It will have 160 plus enemy types. Wow. Senua Saga, you're on notice with your, you know, six enemy (laughs) types. You're getting 160 with uh, Black Myth Wukong. We're getting 80 or more bosses and that the game will be slightly easier than Soulsborne games. Um, It has not been officially confirmed by Black Myth Wukong, but this is a well-known leaker with a a good reputation, so I think we can take it as more than just a rumor. It does seem accurate. How do you guys feel about this news? (laughs) I'm going to let Ryan go while I compose myself for a second. So for someone who is not the biggest Souls fan, I'm pretty excited about this one. I I think this one looks pretty cool. Yeah, I'm excited watching the, the battles and... I do love kind of like it is too in a uh, God of War, like the scale difference in some of the battles is always so cool. The the attacks, the gameplay. It for someone who's not a Souls fan, this has definitely uh, piqued my interest big time. Yeah, I think that this game is still going to be very odd. I mean, you're running around as a monkey fighting all these guys, and you can turn into an insect, like. Games that swing big like that, if it hits, it's going to hit hard. Yeah. Like, I feel like this game is feeling more and more like the heavy favorite for winning game of the year. I know Shadow of the Earth Tree is probably going to be a 99 on Metacritic, but it's it's an expansion, right? It's not a fully brand new game. I think Black Myth Wukong, if it hits, it's going to do huge numbers and everyone's going to love it. Uh, that's my only worry is like, is the oddness going to be a little bit too out there? But man, I mean, who doesn't love 
so many different enemy types and so many bosses. Sounds like there's going to be a lot to do. I love the fact that it's a little bit easier than most Soulsborne games. That way you're not just hitting your head against a brick wall. You know, I want to be able to lose to a boss fight. We've talked about this before. Like, what's the ideal number of attempts before you beat a boss? For me, it's somewhere in the like eight to 10 range. Josh doesn't mind doing the 30 to 50 attempts. That <laughs> drives me wild. And I think Black Myth Wukong is maybe going to be in that like 15 ish attempts per boss, which I think would be awesome. Yeah, yeah it, it's really all going to come down to how good the game mechanics are. I, I mean, if, if the game mechanics are on par with a game like Sekiro or Elden Ring, all of, you know, slash Dark Souls, Bloodborne, uh, Lies of P, right? Where your 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 timing is tight, your movement is fluid. I don't know if there's going to be a parry or a block system or something like that. But if the game mechanics are what they need to be for this type of game, I don't see a way that this game isn't a massive success. I, I mean, in all of the footage that we've seen. The art style to this game is incredible. The lighting is incredible. The animations in this game stand out really well to me. I mean, you know, go check out any of the videos and the combat is just so fluid. The way that the bosses move around and your character moves around and stuff like that. I mean, this just hits on all cylinders for me. And that's why I say the only way I, I, I can imagine a world where this isn't just an absolutely incredible like game for especially for people that like this genre is if the mechanics are bad and I just don't see that happening. I and I think the reason for this leak and why we kind of just buy into it right away is 80 bosses. That sounds about right. You know, yeah, yeah. huge enemy still variety. Like look at Elden Ring. I mean not to keep making comparisons, but look at how many different types of enemies there are in Elden Ring. And that was part of the awesomeness of that game is anytime you were like well, what the heck is that? And you're like, well, I guess I'm going to go find out. You're probably going to die because you don't know how that thing's going <laughs> to attack you or what it's going to do, you know, that kind of stuff. And so that kind of discovery, I think, is what lends itself to Elden Ring being so great. And if Black Myth Wukong is going to have that much enemy variety, I think it's going to lend itself to that as well. So I... Dude, my hype level for Black Myth Wukong is reaching dangerous levels. <laughs> <laughs> and that's... uh, So 80... 80 bosses by 30, 40, 50 attempts. Yeah, I'm, I'm here for it. <laughs> yeah. I'm here for it. But I mean, to be fair, they do say easier than Dark Souls. I'm a little like, I don't know what that means. You know, because a lot of people say, well, Elden Ring is easier than Dark Souls 1. You know, or easier some, than Bloodborne. Right, which yeah. is easy. You know, and it's so it's like, I, you kind of have to have like, a, you know, like a, a control <laughs> yeah. to say, hey, it's easier than this. But I don't really know what that means. And is are there going to be optional bosses, which are really hard, kind of like Melania in Elden Ring, which would be great because people are going to want that challenge. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm very curious. I have a very good feeling that they're going to pull this off. I just I can't wait to get my hands on this. Oh, I so hope you're right. And even this is kind of quickly coming up fast. I mean, it's three months out. I mean, I feel like we've been talking about Black Myth Wukong for such a long time, and it always felt like, man, that's so far away. I don't even want to get hyped at all yet. But now, I mean, three months, it's going to go by quick. It's going to be here before we know it. All right. Well, a couple other stories that we're not covering today, just to catch you up on some other gaming news if you haven't been reading up on it. Arrowhead Studios CEO decided to move into a different role to work good, on game creation good again. For him, so they dude. hired this. this yeah. Uh, yeah, dude, this reinforces everything I love about Arrowhead Studios right now. Is the dude was the CEO, oversaw the launch of this game, oversaw the development of it, and then he goes, "You know what? I feel like I'm kind of too much on the business side of things right now, <laughs> and I'm a gamer. Yeah. I want to be on the creative side of it. I, I love the fact that he made that decision because." I mean, I've always said I like the fact that this guy's chatting with gamers online. He's a real person. He's not doing PR speak or any of that stuff. And the fact that he was like, I just want to talk about games and make games. I don't want to be involved in the whole like business side of being a CEO is is just music to my ears, honestly. 
You mean yeah. you don't want to go public and uh, get shareholders oh, and then just yeah. be no. a suit up in an office? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to respect the guy for just knowing what he likes. And even if I don't know if it resulted in a pay cut or if it's like technically considered a demotion since they, you know, hired another CEO. But yeah, you know, I, I you got to love a person that just loves their passion and that's what they want to do. Heck yeah. Uh, a couple other news stories. Kingmakers released a new trailer. You, that you game looks like a lot trailer? of fun. Did you see it? I mean, where that's the tank shooting the castle? and the castle walls are yeah. falling down did this increase your interest or decrease it any nah. no neither no, way okay. it still looks like silly good fun yeah. it'll be fun for a weekend that's exactly what i saw is i went okay that's cool the destruction's neat but i don't know that it was a positive or a negative for me yeah uh we got some kingdom hearts games finally coming to pc through steam Death Stranding 2 is filmed and recorded, but they said it'll still be over a year of work until that comes out. And there were more videos and more info leaked on Valve's Deadlock. Um, any final thoughts before we close out the show? I'm real excited for Deadlock, guys. <laughs> I Are saw you? I saw a leaked video. It was like a 20-minute video, and it was every character and every ability that the characters had. Dude, this is looking good. This is looking real good, man. This has given me huge Overwatch vibes, but with a slightly more strategic element than just the shooter element. I mean, those are there, obviously, but I mean, you've got tanks, you've got healers, you've got DPS, you've got like this fast travel on this like rail system where you hang from these rails and scooch around the map and stuff like that. Uh, I, I mean, these abilities look great, dude. There's like interrupt characters where you bash people and you kind of like interrupt them and stun them. There's disruptive characters where you can like, you can trade places with somebody. So you teleport oh, wow. like to where they were and then like swap spots with them. So I love like that strategy aspect being involved in a shooter on top of everything else. Cause it really just lends itself to those like I'm going to outplay this person, not just I'm going to click a pixel on their head faster than they can click the pixel on my head kind of thing. So this seems like this is custom built for me. I cannot wait for this, man. The Josh show. I, I'm telling you, I feel like it's Christmas. So whoever put this show together, thank you. I've been a good boy. And <laughs> Well, you can have fun with that. Paul and I will still be playing X Defiant. Oh, dude, if you guys... Yeah. I, there's no way Dude, if it's Deadlock so comes out, you guys are diving deep into that with me. Oh, of course we will. Yeah. I mean, it's a Valve game. You have to pay attention. Yeah, it, it it's... Uh, the, the community is going to get so toxic so fast. Maybe. <laughs> with oh, yeah. Deadlock. I mean, maybe. Guaranteed. Probably. <laughs> Guaranteed. <laughs> Wait, we're, yeah, we're pulling probably. in the League of Legends people, uh, the yeah. Counter-Strike people, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the MOBA elements. Uh, yeah. Team Fortress. It's going to be bad. Team Fortress, <laughs> Team Fortress people are nice, right? Paul has left the voice yeah. chat. That's all I'm saying. I'm not even going to try in that one. All right. Well, that wraps everything up here for this week in gaming. As a reminder, please rate us five stars. Go check out our Patreon page, MultiplayerSquad.com. Your support helps keep our show going. We're on socials everywhere at Video Gamers Pod, and you should 100% join our Discord if you have not yet. Links in the episode description. Amazing gaming community. Thank you to everyone out there for listening. And until next time, happy gaming. See ya. I would like to thank everybody for this awesome episode for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. See everybody.